Okay, so I really loved receiving all your emails with all your questions and your pictures. And don't be disappointed if you don't see your picture on there because this took a lot of time to put together because I can't just take put up an image and then talk about it, right? I need to show you here's the color that would work on your house. And then we photoshopped a lot of things as well. So that took a lot of time. So hopefully a lot of these, a, a lot of this presentation today will just, you're gonna be listening from your own house, right? So you're gonna get a lot of things on what you should do with your house, even if we're talking about other people's images. Okay, so um, what else do I wanna, right? So obviously if I could have shown you image after image, then I could have talked more instead of showing, but I have to show you because otherwise you won't be able to get it. So, um, but the good news is that I now have lots of Ask Maria posts, um, pictures for Ask Maria posts. So this is awesome. And okay, if you're watching this later, pause the photo to think about what you would do and then keep going to see what I did, right? Because this will help you. Okay, so I want to just, set up a few, um, let's see, um, you know, like when the fashion bloggers are on and they put in all these disclaimers because they don't want to annoy people. That's kind of what I want to do next. Okay. So there are four, I'm talking too loud. I know, right? Okay. I need to tone it down because I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there are four kinds of people, four types of people that I'll be speaking to today. So the first is the new designer, right? You're on a steep learning curve and you're, you know, you're just figuring it all out. And um, the, then there's the second, the experienced designer who know, you know your aesthetic, people come to you for your look and feel, and you're always out to learn more, which is why you're here. And of course, let's be clear, you can't get this kind of training on color anywhere else. And then the third, the color enthusiast who loves design really wants to understand how to make their home more beautiful. And then the fourth is the sophisticated color enthusiast. Your home is lovely. People tell you when they come in that you should have been a designer. Now, to be clear, if the sophisticated color enthusiast decides to become a designer, you now fall into the new designer category, not because your aesthetic isn't good, but because decorating for other people, taking their likes and dislikes and budget into consideration is very different from decorating your own home. Now, people give you these impossible scenarios. They'll say, you know, I need bulletproof furniture that's soft as silk, that can handle kids, dogs, pets, and you're, you gotta figure out, does that actually exist? But you know what I'm saying? What I mean is that, you know, when you're a new decorator, people give you all kinds of scenarios that you know, until you've been doing this for a while, you don't really know, can that be done? I don't know, I need to figure that out, right? So, so um, yeah, so when you've been doing this for 10 years, you are armed with the answer. You already know we can't do that. And here's the reason why, right? I mean, the big reason why people come to my courses is so that you can learn the answer to the question, why is the color you're specifying the right color? So you're someone then when you're a sophisticated designer, you don't need to figure it out anymore. You now have the answer. So throughout this presentation, I just want you to notice who you're listening, who I'm speaking to, right? It may not be to you specifically. So this way, there's no need to be offended. All I want for you is for you to have a home that you love and that you have the ability to create that for your clients. That's all I want. And then the other thing, now, throughout this class today, I'm going to be talking to you about the resources that I have for sale, right? Either my ebooks or my color boards or my master class on exterior, e uh, exterior color and e design to help you create a house that you love. And my passion in life is that you love your house from the exterior to the interior and everything about it. And I don't care how you get there. Hire me, hire someone else. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about my business and how it's doing. I've been doing this online for 12 years. I have a big loyal following and lots of repeat customers. So, but since you're watching this class, it means you care about how your house looks. And it's especially important during this time when we're spending so much time staring at our house during self-isolation. 
So I recently found a fashion blogger who I just love, and I'm writing a post about her right now, so you'll find out who she is shortly. Now, every time I watch her, she's selling her own line of makeup, which she is constantly pitching. But I don't care, because I love her, and I learned so much about watching her talk about fashion. And if I want to buy her makeup one day, like, I know where to go. Still, if you buy the wrong makeup, no big deal. But choosing the wrong color for countertops, tile, flooring, siding, brick, stone trim is so expensive to change, most people just live with it. And if you're someone who is truly affected by your surroundings, you will suffer about this every single day. And I know this because I am that person. So here's the bottom line. Design advice is still the cheapest part of any project. So sure, if you're hiring someone to choose everything, including the fringe for the $1,200 pillow going into your living room, then yes, the designer in that scenario could definitely seem like a luxury that most people can't afford. But hiring someone to give you a DIY plan, whether this is for your interior, exterior, your landscaping, is still the best way to get the best look. An experienced designer will be able to give you substitutions for products that you have never even heard of, tell you where to spend, where to save, high, low, Right? So that's the point that I want to make. And I would never do a free webinar where I'm just pitching my stuff the whole time, but I have a business. So I am going to be talking about my products, right? And I'm going to be giving you tons of value. All right? So let's get started. Okay. So I'm just going to now go live. Now you'll see, you will see my screen now. And then, um, oh, and I need to introduce Trisha. Trisha from Maniac is here with me. She is my director of e-design and you know, yesterday Trisha was helping me finish the presentation. There she is. She's, her and I are gonna be kind of tag teaming on this, but it was so funny because Trisha and I are working on this and we're like, okay, we need to find a black and white tile for this bathroom. So we're both, you know, Googling black and white tile. And at the same time, we stuck the same tile on the uh, PowerPoint that we were working on. I mean, come on, what are the odds of that? I will show you what that was. It wasn't just like hex style either. So, I mean, that was kind of cool. So, Trisha's my gal who keeps that department all running smoothly. And I'm gonna talk about um, how my e-design works because a lot of people have questions about that as well. And then Terrence, hey, can I just see you Terrence or can everyone else see you too? Everyone can see me up here. Terrence, he's my, He's my chief tech officer who, like, when we were crashed earlier, he was sweating and I was not. I was just <laughs> fine. I was just waiting for him to get it back up because he's the genius. Okay. So, awesome. All right. So, let me just, so at the end, sorry, at the end, I'll come back and then, you know, we'll do more q and A. So, this might go on for a couple of hours. I mean, two hours probably at the most, but um, the... Um, I have about 62 slides, and from my experience doing presentations, that's an hour. And then we will take just some questions that I can answer as we go along. So, all right, let's get started. Let me just put up the presentation. Do I have to, no, I have to hit share screen, right, Terrence? That's share correct, screen. yep, yeah. share, screen. share screen. Okay, there it is. Okay, and I have it up, but just a minute. There it is. Slide? No, view. Present. Here it is. <clears throat> okay. Here it is. Okay, let me just skip forward. Right, so I already talked about the different types of readers that we were, if you're just jumping on now, I'm talking to four different types of readers. So I just want you to listen from, you know, where you're at so that you don't get offended when, like, I don't want people to feel talked down to, but if you're an experienced designer at some point, you know, you might feel like, yeah, I know this Maria, but you know, other people don't. So just think about that. All right. Okay. And then I just want to let you know, so this, this question I received, I followed your blog for a very long time and love your practical approach to the art of color. We've completed the demolition of our old house about six weeks ago after weeks of delay. We've worked with an architect, have plans to rebuild, and part of our plan is to work through your online design studio on basic choices, how the world effects affected your availability and timing, and I'd love to hear a description of how it works. Okay, 
So the timing is still the same. So when you go on the website and you look at all of my different packages, um, the, the timing is still usually, it depends on how big the package is. So um, I think it's like five to seven days for the smaller packages and seven to 10 days for the bigger packages. Is that right, Trisha? Oh, I can't hear her. Trisha is uh, mute, she muted, so she needs oh, to- okay. okay. Well, she Sorry, should... yeah. That's right, right, okay. Yep, you got okay. it. Right, so I already talked about that, and then I already talked about this. Here's, so here's what I wanna say about this screen. I mean, I kind of talked about it already when I was going through my whole presentation there, but you know, what, like somebody had posted a question on the YouTube, on the, on the uh, stream, on the comments just now, where they said, do you always recommend a white kitchen? So, you know, this conversation is primarily for the person, you know, the whole white kitchen, you know, white subway tile, the end conversation is, you know, is really directed at the color enthusiast who really doesn't know. They're not going to hire a designer. You know, they've hired a kitchen guy to install their kitchen. You know, you end up with the trendy looking kitchen when you don't do that, right? When you, when you don't have an opinion, when you don't, you're not following any kind of anyone's aesthetic. You know, you end up with the kitchen from the brown trend, which is here on the left. Can everyone see this when I move my cursor around? Can you guys see this? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Right. And then, then the trendy kitchen from, you know, the gray trend, right? I just recently posted, Trisha is looking for a house in um, Edmonton and where she lives, a new house and everything has like charcoal floors and everything's gray on gray on gray. Right. Cause that's what everyone just thinks that that's classic and timeless until you've done a few renos, right? People that come to my courses, 40% of the homeowners that get there. I mean, they've done the renovations, they've done the new builds where they put in the trendy uh, stuff in their house and they weren't happy with it, right? So then the black and white trend, right? I mean, the black and white trend, we're back to the black kitchens that are just gonna be as dark and bleak as the brown ones, unless you follow, there's so many details involved with putting together a trendy kitchen and actually having it be beautiful. There's so many different details. So if you're not a designer, you know, this is not your thing, it's easier to have, end up with a kitchen that's beautiful if you just follow the white kitchen subway tile rule, right? And then it's all about the styling. Just like this kitchen, I mean, couldn't be any more like, you know, boring technically, but it's styled nicely. And that's the thing, you can change up the window covering. She doesn't have any here, but she could, just like my kitchen, right? Okay, so let's get started with the Q and A's. All right, from Kitty, she said, I'm totally frustrated searching for new paint for trim and siding and stucco. We just replaced all the windows. I want to end up with a classic and elegant looking house. In the pictures, you see many different colors. The brick is both pink and orange, depending on the light. Please help me and make this simple. The roof is black, which doesn't show up very well in the photo. Okay, so here's the house. Now, what is the first thing that you notice about this house? Now, the first thing is less about the color, it's more about the columns that look like they barely are holding up this. Um, what's it called, Trisha? Oh, it's like a cantilevered kind of. Yeah, yeah right? And so what I had um, my team do is Photoshop in um, some much better looking columns. Now, then, we tried like the color of stone, which was, um, this would be something like rock pork gray with Benjamin Moore, but notice how cool it looks. The brick is more, it's so much more yellow and orange looking. This was not great. So then we did the whole thing in a color like, you know, ballet white or Manchester tan, which will give you the look of cream on an exterior. But the house still looks like it's choppy now, right? Because the rest of the house is orange. And so, um, yeah, there it is. So you can see now the before and after and that the columns are so much better because now it's in proportion to the rest of the house. And then, um, then we Photoshopped it so that it looks now painted. Now, this is what I would do with this house. I would just paint the whole thing green. Now, Please keep in mind, this is a Photoshop. This is not exactly how it would look painted, but um, actually I was impressed that we got that brick detail in there. So, but this is kind of the effect that you would end up with 
So much more clean, you're, and it, you look, you, and it's less like you've got this thing sticking out in front of the house. So that's what I would do with this house. All right, Kristen, it has been brought up that I should also add some shutters or other visual interests. We're working on landscaping as well. But if you were to add shutters, what color would be best? All right, so here's the house. And um, what color should the shutters be? And just think about what your first answer is. And if your first answer is probably right. I had some black shutters put on the house because that relates to the roof. I mean, in general, before the black and white trend ever came along, I once arrived at a client's home who had yellow shutters on their white house. And the husband, he said, oh, Maria, like before you come in, before you come in, could you just tell me like, what color should the shutters be on this house? And I immediately said black. And he said, you've just made your money. <laughs> because um, I just think uh, usually a white house looks the best with black shutters. It just, you know, or black trim, right? Because you start, if you, you start mixing, start adding color to a white house, sometimes it just looks like, well, we couldn't afford, you know, we couldn't paint our house, but we wanted to add some color. So usually, and that's not always the case, but that's usually why black looks the best. Okay, from Kristen, we are building a new home, planning to use stone windows and roof as shown in this inspiration picture. We can't afford to do a complete stone and need to add brick. We can't use stucco or wood. What brick color would you advise? Okay, this was her inspiration photo. So here's what you need to know about this, this kind of stone. First of all, most brick is more pinky orange than this mandarin butternut orange stone on the inspiration picture. So you're not gonna find that orange color of this stone. And so the best thing for you to do would be to, um, find some brick, well, you're, and, you won't, and you probably won't find brick that's this creamy as well, but um, you'd end up having to paint it to actually match the inspiration photo, like to actually match that stone. So, um, and the other thing is, you can tell by looking at this inspiration photo that this house was built in the Tuscan trend. Why? Because there's so much espresso all around the house, but really this house actually needs more orange wood I would say probably even more orange than the inspiration photo here, but you need to add those hits of, of stained wood in orange so that it relates to the orange stone. I mean, design is constantly about looking at like, what does it relate to? What does it relate to? I mean, that's the question that you're always asking yourself. So um, if I were you, I would just do like a limestone that looks just like this. Trisha, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, I mean, you know, once you introduce that like particular orange accent, now you have to address it. So, you know, if you need to add a second cladding, now you're so much more limited in what color that can be, right? So if the limestone was just kind of more solid looking like the other house here shown, yeah. then now you have options. I mean, those terracotta reddish bricks would be okay. You know, you can add different accent colors. You're not sort of like bossed around by that. That yeah, particular orange, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is, is that when you don't know, right, if you, the homeowner that was asking this question, I mean, she, on her own, she'll be spinning around trying to figure out, like, oh, what should I do? What brick? Because basically, her question was that she can't do the whole thing in the stone. So, but an experienced designer is going to know already that, like, this, this brick does not exist in this color. And she wasn't asking for orange, but it's not really a mystery. Like there are two choices here, right? It's cream, it's orange, the end. Like, yeah, and it needs to be that perfect cream too to match that that stone if you're gonna be adding a brick that's cream. And you know, that could be a little challenging to find too. You're probably better if you do have this stone already just to paint it to match the ground color of the stone, that light creamy um, limestone color. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. All right, from, Reagan, not sure if I'm saying that right. We're scheduled to have our house painted in one week. We are not painting the orange pink brick. Now, are we looking at the questions? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions that people might have. Are you looking at the questions? Yeah, I'm looking at the comments here. All right, well, I mean, if somebody has a random, uh, you know, 
mm -hmm. question about what we're talking about. Should I, um, I can look at them as well. Yeah, so, so, so Sophia over here on, on YouTube, just uh, about the last house is saying, would you suggest all brick instead of mixed uh, brick and stone to match the inspiration? And I mean, yes, like ideally, if you can use the same cladding, th you know, throughout, that's always best. But um, sometimes it's just, um, you know, you have the more expensive cladding on the facade, and then you need to connect with it, you know, something sort of matches in a more, you know, in a a more affordable uh, brick, for example. And I think that's sort of what's happening here. Or the um, HOA like requires that there are- Yeah, often. often it's required to have two different kinds of cladding like brick and stone combined. So those would be the situations, yeah. And then also, okay, I'm gonna have it here, yeah. And then also, we also show, talk a lot more about this in my exterior master class, a little plug <laughs> that, okay. All right, so now, um, okay, we have horrible bright white dental molding on the edges of our brick. I've painted it since we bought the house. I plan to paint it along with our trim, Sherwin-Williams Fawn Brindle. I've learned from you that Fawn Brindle is the color, natural color of stone. I like Sherwin-Williams Mountain Road for the siding and garage doors. I read on your blog that green undertones look good with orange brick. So Fawn Brindle looks great against our brick, but when I put it next to Mountain Road, I'm worried that it will look too army-ish. I don't know what to do. Do I go lighter on the trim? Do I go darker on the siding? My husband says no to two different trim colors, but I did consider fawn brindle for the stucco molding and jogging path for all the other trim. I'm stuck. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. So I can see your dilemma for sure. And when we were Photoshopping this house, we spent the most time combined on, <laughs> on these colors. So, um, because it's just, there was a couple interesting things that I wanted to note. So the first thing is, you know, when you look at this house, what does, what immediately needs to be removed? That's, you know, just because your house, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff stuck on it doesn't mean, like I, I received an email from someone who had some Tudor style siding on their house and their house is, it is by no means, not even remotely a Tudor style house. So she was wondering what color should I paint the Tudor um, boards versus the stucco. At that point, I would just paint it all out or remove the Tudor because it's not a Tudor. So you don't need to try to make it look like one. And really the trend now is to just paint everything out the same color. So this whole, you know, darker um, uh, trim, I mean, it depends. It really depends on what your house is. But if you look at this house, you know, you can see that maybe they were trying to do some yellow, the yellow beige in the gable here, because again, the house does have, you know, it's orange and you can see some yellow bits in it, but it just sits there all by itself. Now, then what we did was I photoshopped it the same color as the brick. I thought, well, that would be one way to get rid of it. You could paint it out, but as you can see, it's not happiness yet because it's now solid and the brick is um to, you know it's shaded and different colors in it and we tried many different colors and none of it looked good and um but then oh 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 just a minute but we removed these eyebrows because they were very bad here and then the shutters right i mean shutters should generally look like they should be able to close and so um, I then kept the shutters here because I thought this way it makes this window not look so small. Um, but removing those eyebrows above the windows, I think made a huge difference here. Okay, moving on. So this would be a color more like... Um, Fawn Brindle or Rockport Gray. Well, yes, that's right. So this is more in that realm. And uh, so this is good. I mean, I think this works. I would not do it in a jogging path kind of sage green right now because I would say that that was a look that we did more in the 90s. We did tons of sage green houses um, with brick and that was just, that was a 90s thing. I mean, sage green is definitely back in this, you know, in the black and white trend. However, it's not being used as a main neutral on exteriors, obviously, because everything's black and white. Oh, I wanted to put in one more thing, right? Because I forgot to, uh, when we were talking about the woman that wanted to know how it works, 
when we're doing specifying e-design. So we wouldn't go this far as to photoshopping your house, but we would in general, I mean, if, if the house really would, it would, if it would make a huge difference to Photoshop something to show a client, we will do that. But in general, we will show you like, here's what the house will look like painted in this color because you need to test it on your own anyway in order to make sure that it looks correct on your house. And then we have a process where we show you how to do that. Okay, so now, then the other option for this house would be to just paint the whole thing like cream, which also looks good. But now, when, she, when I did that, I said, oh, I think, that, I think the shutters need to go back on the right-hand side. But then I didn't like that because um, it, the shutters are too big on this, on this uh, window here above the door, and it starts to like compete with the, like visually with the door. So in the end, I had, um, I took out the actual shutters on the area above the window. And I would do, I would just, I would just do the window, no matter what you do with this house, I would have the shutters be black here. Oh, I forgot to fix that. I would have the shutters be black to relate to the roof, but also because it relates to the black windows visually, right? I mean, windows look black all during the day. And so no matter what you do, I would, then it just kind of makes the windows appear visually bigger. So um, that's what I would do on this house. Yeah, and if I may, the um, the color, I think that we went for here, photoshopping this house uh, to like a white color because the windows were all like, it's quite a bright white. Yeah. Um, we used a soft grayish, green, gray, grayish, um, gray mist, which is, you know, will give you just a really nice, soft and deliberate contrast with the white windows without looking, you know, too gray or too creamy. It still feels like a white house, yeah. Okay, somebody wanted to know if we could talk about white versus cream for exteriors. I think it really depends on the house. It depends on the roof. I was just looking at a house that someone had sent me um, where there's a lot of roof and the roof is like, it's like a terracotta-ish brick kind of really earthy color. That house would not look good in white, right? It, it would look now, you get that clean and dirty effect. And that, this is a new, distinction that I'm now teaching in my live workshops, because a lot of people, once they grab on to the whole clean and dirty word, they throw it around and they use it everywhere. And they're using it even when they're looking at, an, at a space where really the answer is not, this is clean and dirty. The answer is, well, well the elements, they don't, there's nothing here that relates to it. So um, where was I now? So I was talking about the house with, yeah. So the house with the dirty colored earthy roof, better with the cream than white in that case. So, I mean, there's a lot of homes that are just being painted stark white everywhere. So, but it, I mean, it's fine with black, right? White and black, nothing wrong. So I hope that answers that question. Okay. All right, moving on from exteriors to hardwood flooring. This is from Linda. Um, she said, I want to get new flooring, something lighter than what I currently have since I have a white dog, something that will look good with my cupboards since they're quite busy. So this is Linda's home and you can see that um, her floors kind of look like they were installed in the Tuscan trend, which they probably were. And so this is the na this natural white oak is something we're specifying all the time now. It's totally, you know, it's absolutely just as classic and timeless as a medium brown floor. So it really depends on your interior, what you're trying to achieve. Um, but you can see that's definitely too yellow and wrong with her taupey tiger stripe cabinets. So um, we found this Mohawk um, oak hardwood, which I think we found it at Lowe's because I know Linda is local to, ben, to the Vancouver area. So Linda, in case you're watching, this is what you do. However, this, this is, I think, a great lesson because you can even see how the hardwood and actually relates to her countertops as well, to these granite countertops. I don't, what's the name of these countertops? I can't remember. They're very popular. They've, they've been everywhere. But anyway, um, you can see that it kind of relates. So you really, you do have to, if you've got like a, you know, not like a, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you have orange oak cabinets or if you've got cherry cabinets. I mean, 
it mostly does look the best if you find some flooring that actually relates. And let me just address the other thing. So I've been receiving questions as well about, about somebody was saying that they, she said when, she said she put in hardwood flooring all throughout her house except the bedrooms because she couldn't afford to put in the hardwood flooring in the bedrooms. And now she wants to do the bedrooms. You know, can she do something different? So the answer is no, right? You have to do carpet. You got to do something different. I have been in homes where every single bedroom was a different color hardwood floor. It's not good, right? Because when you're doing renovations, the look that you want to achieve is the look, it, you want it to always look like it was all installed at the same time. So that's the question you need to constantly ask yourself when you're mixing old with the new. Does this look like it was all installed at the same time? And that is why it often doesn't work. If you have an 80s bathroom and you throw in some encaustic tile because you're replacing the floor tile in that bathroom, it will be bad, right? Because it's totally old and new. So you have to constantly be asking yourself that question. And um, where was I going with this now? Um, there was somewhere I was going. Can I just uh, say something about uh, combining yeah. wood floors with wood cabinets? Yes. I mean, typically... Oh. Yeah, no, I know, I know where it's going. Hold on. Typically, you want to go lighter with the yes. floor then, um, unless the cabinets are really light, then maybe you would go a little darker. But you yes. want to create some contrast um, between those wood cabinets and that floor, ideally. Yes, that's for it right. To look right. I'll yeah. try to match them exactly. So going back to where I got lost on sidetracked on my story. So I was talking about the bedrooms, right? So the answer is, so I actually, my neighbor. Um, when I was at her house just a while ago, she showed me some floors, like she had continued the flooring from her living room into her kitchen. She said, we literally, I said, wow, like you didn't have this? I mean, it looks like it matches perfectly. She said, yes, but we literally went to every single hardwood floor in store in all the lower mainland. We, weekends, we searched and we searched to find this, the, the hardwood that actually matches. And so, then they actually found it. So like, that is what you would actually need to do if you wanted it to match. And then the other thing you need to know is if you're, if you end up with, oh, it's close, but it's not quite, I mean, that's just the world of renovations. You know, when I had a client that read to have her floors redone, she took out her um, kitchen, opened it up to the great room. And then she extended her like um, 60s oak flooring. When she had it all restained, you could see the new versus the old, but Oh, well, I mean, she, I mean, it's fine because it's better to have it all be the same anyway, or in her case it was. And so, you know, it doesn't match perfectly, but you overlook that, you forgive that because you get that it was a renovation and you get that you tried the best you could to have it match. So that's the answer. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's when, when you have like a, an older oak floor, maybe with a skinny plank and then you've got a divider and then now you've got this wider plank, rest yeah, one running along. So. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. But I know hardwood floors are a huge, huge conversation. I mean, we give advice on hardwood flooring all the time because it's such a huge and expensive mistake to make, right? So, so thank you, Linda, for this question. It's a great question. Okay, from Deborah. She said, hi, Maria, here's my niece's house. They want to change the wall color. I'm still yelling. I know it's bouncing around in here. <laughs> so Deborah sent this photo along with a couple of others but here's like and so you can see that she's got this existing blue gray which in actual fact I mean you know blue and orange are complementary colors that isn't really how I would make a color choice for a room any room is looking at the wood that's not the place to look when you're looking for a color for the walls but there's really no decorating happening in this room yet however if she wanted to add you know, a blue gray sofa, you know, to start to work with this paint color. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Doesn't bother me at all. But then she sent a picture of the um, fireplace stone. And I mean, that would be the obvious place to look if you then wanted a neutral to connect to your, um, to your fireplace. And so here you can see that there's some violet grays in here. There's some taupes. There's some gold beige, maybe even a little bit of orange beige, some green beige. 
And so the best way to update that would be, you know, so pale oak would be a great color to, um, to paint this room. So there's an example of what pale oak looks like. And then Cedar Key is another one that is slightly more pink than pale oak. And it is, it would also relate nicely to the brick fireplace. So sometimes the place to look for your wall color is really no further than the stone around your fireplace. Yeah, and um, just just to be clear, the uh, pale oak is a, excuse me, pale oak is a taupe grayish. So it has a taupe undertone. And so is Cedar Key, it has a taupe undertone because the um, like the overall read of this stone is is in the realm of taupe, and so you know those are and nice. That would feel the most current right now, right? Yeah, and they also taupes also work really nicely with wood trim. So that's right, they do <clears throat> because they're a nice balance of the warm and cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, from Nancy, I would like to repaint my living room, dining room, hallway, and upstairs hall. I have painted about six boards. Can't quite decide. It is presently Benjamin Moore white sand. Thinking of soft chamois or white down, I would really appreciate your input. Okay, so this is Nancy's so pretty living room and her, you can see that her wall color looks great with her um, furniture because white sand has a slight pink beige undertone. And um, so does her furniture, it's really pretty, but you know, like everybody wants to go lighter now, fresher, and that's why she's looking to paint her walls. So here is um, her two samples that she sent. So um, now, this is a good time to mention that when you are, we're going to talk about e-design at the end, and so we're going to talk about the challenges that um, we face when we're dealing with online um, clients and just sort of how it works to do e-design. But one of them is we always need photos taken with good natural light, no flash and no lights on. Because you can see that on the right hand side where she's got the up light, it, it skews the color and, and adds yellow to the color. And so now you can't see what the color is. And so lights have to be off for sending e-design photos and then the other hot tip is to always look for the white in the room to gauge, gauge your white, off-white, or cream. And so in this case, you can see how white her lampshade is over here. And so that's a good way to kind of see that, well, here she's got more of an off-white, creamy background and same with here. So I would do the room and wipe down. I think that would be, I mean, really they're both not a bad option, but you can see that now that we're splitting hairs, Soft chamois is a grayish, it's slightly more gray. And so if you want the freshest look in this case, then I would do the white down. I think it's still um, white, or, well, it's an off-white, so it relates, it's off-white? Yeah. Oh, cream, technically. Yes. I guess. Well, yeah, more creamy. So it relates to her pillows. Yeah, and her, yeah. So that's what I would do in here. All right, from Marlene, here are photos from two bathrooms we just finished. We would like to know what color to paint both the bathroom walls since we use the same tile in each one. As you can see, one has no natural light and the other has a small window. Is it okay to paint the bathrooms the same color? She said, I've been reading your emails for a few years now and have been following your advice on designing the bathrooms. I was careful to only have one pattern, which was the tile, and I had a white countertop. I found two glass black sinks on clearance, and I think I did it right, but the last step is the paint color. Okay, so here are Marlene's bathrooms. You can see that the one with natural um, light is the one on the right, and no natural light is the ones on the left. And so the first thing here is that when you're looking at this bathroom, the first question is, what would be the right color for the shower curtain? What would be the obvious choice if you're looking at what's in this bathroom right now? And the answer is a black and white shower curtain because then that would relate to her black vanity and her black sink. So I tried to find something modern because she has a more modern bathroom. And then what we're dealing with for the, um, for the um, tile is that it's like a taupe. So this well, is, what were you gonna say? Oh, like a violet gray. Violet gray, yeah. Yeah, Trisha knows the Sherwin Williams colors better than I do. So this is broadly gray and it's violet gray and that is what I would suggest trying. And yes, it's totally fine to paint both bathrooms the same color because basically what you want to do 
is you want to pick up the tile in the bathroom. So, so there's what worldly gray looks like. Because you want to notice that paint color always gets like twice as bright as it does on the chip. And for exterior, it gets two to three times, well, sometimes it can be two to four times brighter, which is why the creams outside are like green beige. They're more like the lightest of beiges for the inside. They would look like light beige in your house, but they look like cream outside. Okay. From Bonita, I recently painted my entire 450 square foot studio apartment bedroom more simply white. I would like to add an accent wall. Any suggestions on which wall and the color? Furnishings and prints have lots of blues, lime green, turquoise, and blush. All right, so this I thought, I love the fact that Bonita sent me this question because everyone is painting their house stark white right now. Now, and a lot of people, I think, are left with, if you have had color on your walls and now suddenly you've got white, white kind of just, like it disappears into nothing. Like, and it's, so white walls just kind of float. Whereas the minute you put a color in the room, it kind of encloses the room, which is why people say white makes a room feel bigger, but that's not really the best reason to paint a room art gallery white. So um, what we need here is some color. What we need here is some more decorating, right? Because the, and she wants an accent wall, but um, the reason why she's now thinking an accent wall would be a good idea is because now it's like, it looks like something's missing in the room because now the walls are just, they've disappeared. And the only thing that she's got in here that kind of relates to the walls is the bed, but that doesn't really count in this case because, uh, you know, the bed's not really doing anything either. And so um, what else do I want to say about that? And so we need some curtains. We need some bedding because when you walk into the studio apartment, the first thing you see is the bed, you know, and the windows, right? That's the first thing you see. And so we came up with a plan. We got a new duvet cover. We got some accessories. We have some um, curtains. And I would say that the room, you know, needs some color. It would look great painted, um, like a, this blue ice color. However, even if you added just these few things to this room, you know, a coffee table that's round, that would replace the square coffee table or the rectangular coffee table because the room, you know, it's a small space when you're, when you've got a studio apartment, this coffee table is also from Ikea, um, like that. So think about, I mean, she's got some great colors happening in here already with that periwinkle, those periwinkle blues. My sister loves the, this color, these color blues, um, and then the turquoise. So you just need to keep, you know, you need to repeat those colors and also lamps, right? Don't forget, we need more lamps. It's still winter. We need more lamps. I cannot stress that enough. I had somebody email me a picture of an office that I couldn't put in here anymore, but she had, um, she had um, a bunch of track lighting, track lighting in her office and not a single lamp. And she said, I, want, I think I want a dark color in here. When I have the lights on, it just washes out the room. Well, and so I replied and said, well, I wouldn't have any of those lights on. I, you need three lamps in a row, boom, 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 up against, because she had like a, um, a desk that, that ran the length of the wall with like two or three chairs in front of it. It was a great little, she had a great little office, but still needs lamps. Those overhead lights are not doing any, anyone any favors. I recently saw uh, someone's finished new build where they must've had like, I don't know, like, like so many pot lights, the entire ceiling was filled with pot lights. And I'm just telling you right now, recessed lighting is, I don't know, it's at least a hundred dollars each. And you just don't have those lights on when you're spending any time in a room. But I just, I find that builders are so quick to throw them in and they're so unnecessary. And they so don't give you that atmosphere that you need that's created with um, lamps. That's what we need, okay. From Sheila, I'm literally in the process of helping my mother-in-law e-decorate a new condo. It's a fresh slate. She purchased a butterscotch leather sofa, looking for chairs to go with it. What color? I have a few ideas, 
but would love to see what you think is best. My advice was to find the area rug next and get chairs to coordinate with both. Although the wall color was already chosen, I don't think it's too bossy, as you would say. It has a yellow undertone and that is also in the sofa. All right, so this is her sofa right here. So this is the only thing I got. Oh, no, I didn't end up putting it in. Okay, so I actually forgot that I was gonna put it a picture of, oh yeah, there it is. Let's go to here first, yes. So this was, I think this was Bavarian cream that the room was already painted. And there's totally nothing wrong with that. I agree. Um, and, but the thing that you need to find and the reason why this is hard is because you need either a piece of art or you need a rug. So in this case, I found this um, art from West Elm and, you know, it made it immediately so much easier to find the rug, to find an accent chair, right? Because you might not choose this rug if you're just out there scouring rugs, but it's much easier to then decide that it's a good choice once you have the art chosen. So I know I say this over and over again, like a broken record, but you really do need that inspiration, like to just start pulling colors from the sky without having something that relates, right? So now we've got the butterscotch sofa in the art and we have the blue in the art. And um, that's, what, that's what's gonna help you pull it together. So you need to find that thing. You need to look at some art and, or look at some rugs. Although I do find that rugs are harder to choose. Like I would go, I usually would choose a pillow first. It's easier to fall in love with a pillow or a piece of art than it is a rug. Because there's just so many of them out there. And as I said recently um, on my last post, I was saying that, um, that, um, that, you know, so many websites, they have rugs from the 80s still. They're still trying to sell their old and dated rugs that nobody wants. So um, that's why Lulu in Georgia is one of my favorite places to look for area rugs because you're not having to wade through all these dated rugs. So um, what else should we add to that? So this is more if you wanted a more of a neutral palette. I mean, this is where everybody is right now in the world of decorating, right? I mean, there's just like so many rooms that are like cognac and, you know, butterscotch and all these kinds. I mean, that's fine, nothing wrong. But if you want the neutral palette, this is the more neutral palette. If you want more colorful, then this is the way to go. But you know, you've got lots of options with this butterscotch sofa. I mean, you do. You're not limited to even just these two palettes, but you need to find that inspiration to um, propel you forward. Or if, or if you need help, my get me started package, just saying, where we help you find like a rug or you know pillows. And, and, you, and if you only need a rug and pillows because you just need that inspiration, you can go to one of the, um, the paint um, packages and then add on the rug and pillows. So it's a little bit uh, less expensive than the Get Me Started package. Okay, for Mary, we would like to know if this quartz is off-white, please see attached, and which paint colors would you suggest for the white kitchen cabinets and island? This quartz is for the countertops and backsplash. We're planning on neutral white walls throughout, so which colors are suggested for the walls, ceiling, and millwork? This quartz will follow into the bathrooms with white cabinetry, also in the master ensuite. Since the interior of the window comes in a standard white, in all likelihood it won't match, will this prove to be a problem? So I want to answer this last question before I proceed, because I've seen this question probably 10 times in all the, in all the emails that I've, been, that I've been getting from y'all in the last couple days, that everyone's worried about the color of their window. So here's the thing. In the Tuscan trend, there were lots of, um, lots of new builds with stark white windows. However, because everybody was painting with browns and golds and darker earthy colors, cream was what it needed to be, all the trim. And so, I mean, regardless of what it is, right? If you've got stark white windows or cream, it doesn't really matter what your window color is. When you're inside, your paint, there's way more millwork and doors and trim than just your windows. So the rule of thumb would be to ignore your window color. Just choose the trim that matches your windows. And I talk about this also in my white, uh, what is complicated ebook. So um, 
Well, not the win the choose the trim that matches like your finishes. Yeah, your finishes. And, Don't yeah, that's right. And not to worry so much like if you have true white windows, but you want an off-white or creamy palette inside, you're not going to be bothered by the difference between the window, the skinny window frame and the trim. You know, you're gonna want that millwork to match what it should be for the cabinets and stuff. That's right. And like, yeah. are you gonna notice that? Are you gonna notice that you have off-white and cream when you have stark white windows? or vice versa, that your windows are cream, but you have white, yes, you will notice that. But you, that's just a mistake you're gonna to have to live with because, because it's way more important that your trim color is correct because that's going to affect which wall color you can put up and like that. Um, so I had somebody send me a photo that I couldn't put up anymore of her house. She had, um, she had creamy yellow windows and a navy blue house, and there's nothing wrong with that. But she didn't want that color for her windows, and so she asked me what I could, what I would do to fix that. Well, at that point, there's really no way to fix it. I would now work with that yellowy, creamy color of the windows in terms of painting the rest of her house because her house wasn't big enough. Like sometimes you can ignore the window color on an exterior because if you have a bigger house, you got more things happening railings, just like, like more architectural features, you might be able to ignore a mistake made on choosing windows in the white world. You know, obviously, you know, black or bronze, you're always going to notice that. But, you know, there's a, if you, it's, so it really depends, right? That's why, that's why all of this is more of a custom thing, you know, because it, with her house, her house was not, didn't have enough going on. It was a smaller house and, you know, it just didn't have enough going on where she could ignore those yellow windows. She needs to work with them. So, um, so I hope that answers that question. I just want to see who else. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yeah. Okay. So let's, t so, um, I thought that this would be a really great, I post, I, I, um, I'm using this question because I think so many people obviously are installing marble looking countertops, right? So, this is, this is Nuvo Calcutta, right? Trisha, is she there? Yes, I think it is. Oh, sorry, Calcutta Nuvo by Susan. Yeah, Stone. it is, yeah. Okay, so now, so um, are these taupes again? Yes, because this is taupe and grayish. So here's what you need to know about a lot of these countertops. Um, so first of all, I, let me review the fact that um, you're not gonna find like, like there's only one true white, one or two at the most true white countertops that most um, stone quartz companies have. And as I talked about in my white ebook, um, because the natural resin that comes from quartz is already like an off white, most of the countertops are then more sort of off white, cream, grazy. So this is like a grazy taupe, right? So this is, so you wanna be looking at taupes when you are painting the walls, and then you're gonna be in the realm of like off-white, not true white when you're painting the cabinets. Um, yeah, and at this point you could make, you could do everything in aesthetic white or aggregate white, you know, I mean, because that's just kind of a look now, everything's the same, you know, um, and what else? And here's the other thing I wanna say now, if you put this, this um, kind of countertop with these very defined, big lines, Trisha, how would you say this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the really large scale pattern. That's it, right? large scale pattern. You can get lost in a small yeah. application. So think about this. If your vanity is here, right? It gets cut out from here. And then you have a sink right here in the middle. Now you have like, you know, six inches around and you have these odd looking, you know, random bits of this pattern. So you got to think about that when you are putting this big quartz in your smaller bathrooms because you have a lot less counter space. So um, just, just consider that when you are looking at this kind of a big pattern. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about this, Trisha? Um, 
And that's about it. Not I guess. really. I mean, that covers it. Like, it's just that you yeah. got to be careful. I mean, it it you get it's really attractive this really bold pattern when you're looking at it on a big slab in the store. But you have to think about how sort of chopped up it's going to be in your space and whether the you know the scale is appropriate. You might want something more subtle. Yeah, that's right. In the bathrooms. I mean, this yeah, is or even a small kitchen. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Perfect. From Bianca. Several years ago, a slow leak in our pipes rotted out the floor underneath our cabinets. We got a contractor friend to do the work for us at cost. He used leftover materials from other projects and basic cabinets to keep costs low. The only thing I got to choose was the paint color. I always wanted a cheerful blue and yellow kitchen, so that's what I chose. Even as I watched them paint, I knew the colors were wrong, but I never saw this as a remodeling project. I just wanted to get back into my kitchen. Now my husband is considering replacing the upper cabinets, and regardless, it's time to paint again. This is an old house built in 1902. What should I do? So, excuse me, you can see that her contractor friend showed up with some Tuscan, a Tuscan countertops that he had sitting in his garage, right? So he stuck them in the kitchen and it's not happiness yet because now we do have a clean and dirty issue. Oh, right, I started talking about that. <laughs> And I totally got sidetracked. So here's how you know if something is a clean and dirty color combination versus the colors don't relate. So the question to ask yourself is, do I need to scrub down that countertop, right? Does it feel like we need to like, you know, get out the scrub brush and all of all of those, you know, products that we all have in our house that we're cleaning everything with right now? <laughs> you know? Do we need to power wash it? I, I, do we need to scrub it? That's how you know it's a clean and dirty problem, okay? Because obviously the countertop here does not relate either to this color scheme. However, it also is way earthier and dies with this fresh um, yellow and blue color scheme. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What's the new color of the countertops? It is coming it's white right and here we have a little inspiration picture on the right and then but look even if in a pinch you were like i just need to live with this kitchen for a little while longer you know i you could get some cutting boards that pick up the color of the countertops bring in some blue and white ginger jars my favorite way of decorating with blue i just think because i just love the fact that you can throw all those color all those ginger jars together and that all those patterns go together it doesn't matter what they are i just love that and um so if this was my kitchen and i had to choose between replacing the 50s cabinets that clearly don't go with the new cabinets underneath i would still put in a new countertop first before i would put in new uppers because this countertop bugs me so much but however you guys all need to understand the power of paint if, I mean, if you had to live with this kind of a countertop, let's say this is in your, I don't know, basement suite, and you're like, yeah, we're not, we're not painting, we're not doing this. Paint it, paint the countertop. People do this all the time. I was once in a client's house where she said every couple of years, she just repainted her countertop and it looked amazing. And same with floors. And I've written this post about, um, there is a post on my blog where I had, I had given, um, given a client a color for some tile in a kitchen. I mean, if you're living with bad tile that just like you suffer looking at it every day, paint it because it is never, you're never gonna like it. Like you're just never going to like it, right? Like we're never going, we're not gonna in your lifetime go back to this, you know, like somebody go back to this goldy cognac -y countertop that belongs in the Tuscan trend. I mean, you know, because here's the thing, when the new trends come, they're always different. The same thing happens in fashion. I just got another picture from someone who had like a 90s maple kitchen. They had just bought the house and the kitchen was quite pretty. Like it had like a nice kind of creamy countertop on it. I don't think like it, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if I had to choose between keeping this kitchen that I saw and decorating, like I would just decorate it always first, unless, you know, I mean, I, when you're, when you, if you can afford to 
if you can only afford to do one thing, renovate your kitchen or decorate, I mean, I just decorate, but of course, you know, I'm a decorator, so I'm biased and I get that like a look and a feel. I mean, you could fix up this kitchen. I mean, you could with some paint. I mean, you know, with some styling, even with what I've added here. So now I'm off this, oh, right, right. So she, so she said, now that wood is back, she said, can, what I ch what, can I just change the countertops? Well, yes, wood is back, but it's not back in that 90s pinky orangey colored maple. Like your kitchen will still look 90s, that's the thing. So yes, wood stained cabinets are back, but not in that color. And that's why that kitchen needs to be painted if, if you want it to look current, you know? And then a lot of people will say, they'll say, oh, the wood is in such good condition. It's such good quality wood. Well, that's your husband saying that. Like, it is, I'm sorry, but you know, men do care about wood. I get it, like, I get it. But, but your wife cares about, like, the house looking beautiful and the house looking fresh and feeling current and feeling updated. And you know, it's the wife that's traditionally, she's the one that mostly cares. So, you know, happy wife is a happy life. I'm just saying. All right. Can I just say too, like, um, don't forget that, you know, you, you probably don't want to put quartz in this kitchen, you know, um, but you can certainly find some affordable white, um, off-white marble look kind of laminates and and just to speak to the whole thing but the trend will never come back the same I mean what's new about the new laminates is the profile is not that rounded edge which sort yeah. of makes it look dated That's now right. they they have sh uh, straighter squared off edges that look more like stone and but they're still really affordable and they look pretty convincing so like yeah. that would be something you know if you want to spend a little bit but not a lot you could look at for this That's right. top too yeah yeah, and then you can see that she's got this pink, I don't know if that's tile or what that material is, but um, Trisha and I then found a couple of options for, I mean, you could stencil this kind of tile. Like this is trendy, but you could do a stencil. There's lots of tutorials online. Like I just really wouldn't live with bad tile. Like, you know, paint it every couple years if you need to. If it's a high traffic area, put a carpet down where you're constantly standing. I mean, paint is such a miraculous and fabulous thing. And especially now in these times when, oh my gosh, you know, we're staring at our house, we're at home and the budget's gonna now, you know, the new kitchen reno might not happen, but hey, let's start getting creative and paint that goes a long way. So that's when you can get trendy as well. Cause I mean, if you install this tile in your kitchen, I mean, it would, it would say, that you renovated in the, you know, last four, last three or four years when this encaustic tile has been in. So I wouldn't call it a classic and timeless look. However, I would certainly choose this tile over what she's got now or this kind of look, right? So that would give it a really fun, fresh look. Okay. Yeah, somebody said there's a stick on vinyl that can be used to cover the countertop as well. Yeah, that's a hot tip. Thanks, Sophia. All right, from Nancy. Master bedroom in need of assistance. The fireplace wall across from the bed, the short hallway to the master bath and entire bathroom have, has buzz killer pink beige travertine. It is definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. The accent wall is Benjamin Moore Etruscan. Uh, Affinity 355, my husband selected it because it's the color of my hair. Oh my gosh, we have to keep that. I mean, that's adorable, truly. Okay, not sure if entire room should be that color. Definitely want an additional color for a bench for the foot of the bed or maybe a few pillows in the named color for window seat and around the bed. Do I repeat the new color as well in the nightstand lamps? Also not sure if I should place mirrors over the mirrored nightstands or artwork. And then could finally get to nightstand vignettes. I want to love the room despite the very bossy travertine. Okay. So here is the room. Now, there's a lot of good things happening in this room. I love the animal print rug. Totally fun. I mean, nothing wrong with the black um, bed, like the black headboard and the black coordinating balance. And even that color looks so great with an animal print. Now, what is wrong with this room? And if you think about it, and if you look at this black 
bedspread, it's the placement of the black, right? The black is very heavy on top of the bed. It just kind of blends in to the black headboard and the pillows actually do look custom, but they look like they weren't made that well. And so they have this sort of lumpy kind of look to them. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure if the bed skirt was custom. Hopefully it's not because you're not gonna, then you wouldn't like my advice so much, but, <laughs> but here's what I would do. We need to move the bed skirt, the black from the bed skirt. That needs to be on the, um, the black from the bed spread needs to be there and then put in something lighter and fresher for the bedding. Um, and then I had my team Photoshop the, some pillows in, right? So the, um, I would take the color of the um, accent wall and repeat it in the window seat to kind of move it around. Um, yeah. And then you could put in some white lamps and I would, I would have no issues with putting in like white mirrors on both sides. Cause I think the look, the, the, this room has a glam feeling to it. And so there's nothing wrong with adding some framed mirrors on either side of this bedroom. So this room needs very little tweaking truly for it to suddenly go from, uh, now did I put them? Yeah. From just kind of like, Oh, kind of I'm trying, I'm not there yet to like, Bam, right? It's kind of amazing now. And back to the travertine. So I'm guessing that the focal point of this bedroom is the window seat and the um, bed. So I'm not sure if I would be so annoyed by the, you could paint it if this is really bothering you. But I think what, I think that once you actually redid the room so that you've, you know, balance the black a little better, you would be happier with the room and would be focused less on the hard finish travertine fireplace. Because, you know, getting, decorating is all about distracting the eye from something that doesn't work. I mean, if the room looked like the room on the right, eh, maybe you could just live with the travertine fireplace. You're not, you know, I mean, because it's not the first thing you see when you walk in the room. Although I can appreciate that when you're laying in bed, you're looking at it too. Mm -hmm. But um, I was once uh, helping a client decorate her living room and we were actually able to add all these bright, fun, fresh colors that were definitely creating a clean and dirty problem with her fireplace. However, when you walked into the room, the fireplace was like way over on the right. It wasn't something you saw until you finally sat down. It just wasn't the first thing you saw. So even though it was really earthy and Tuscan, eh, you could live with it. So, you know, think about what's the first thing you see when you walk into a room. That is where your focus should be. All right. From Yang, I have this bed frame and nightstand set. What bedroom wall color would work great? Appreciate the opportunity to get your opinion on this. Okay. So again, we have just it's a black nail head um headboard and the sky's the limit and actually i didn't mind the the eggplant color that's there now but i'm guessing that um that yang is maybe it's an old color so maybe he or she is ignoring that and um so i found some other great colors that would work with it as well if you wanted to keep the same kind of elegant bedding, which would work with this more elegant glam headboard. Um, yeah. What else do we want to say about that, Trisha? <laughs> well, I mean, just that the headboard is like, it's pretty glam. So you don't want to be putting like a, a pale, soft color on the walls. You know, it, it needs like a nice rich jewel tone. I mean, like, you know, like the, the rich kind of purple she has now is like you said, not bad. And yeah. um, there are some options here for, you know, that's something that would really ramp it up like a beautiful hot pink, you know, would make that look super glam. And then you could balance it again with, you know, some crisp white bedding that just picks up the black of the headboard again. And um, yeah. And, you know, and, and make sure that you, I mean, there's, I, I got lots of questions about um, bedrooms 
if you were going to look for a duvet that wasn't just this simple black and white one that we've placed here, um, I would make sure that you make sure that there's some black in the bedding so that it doesn't just die sitting there, you know, without, it needs to now relate. Black is now a color that you have introduced into the bedroom and it should be repeated in the bedding. So unless you're doing something just white, right? Then you, then you can kind of be a little, you can, now you can just go eeny, meeny, miny, mo with the color, something strong, something vibrant, um, just like this. I mean, that's why all of these, all of these more jewel tones are in again because they balance the heaviness of black because that's, you know, blacks right back from the eighties as well. Mm -hmm. All right, Marianne said, we're gonna redo our ensuite soon and we'll do a complete gut as it is 22 years old and needs it. See the first picture that shows the bedroom paint and carpet colors, which we have no plans to change. This is cork. The color is running through all rooms in our house. We have a beautiful white cabinet kitchen with black quartz. We have black furniture with red and blue accents. What color do we do, we do the ensuite? White seems boring, but I can't think of anything else. Okay. So I'm not really sure what is boring about the bathroom on the right, but you want to think about that, you're, that you have to consider all the details again. So, and then again, I just wanted to point out that the bathroom on the left was clearly installed without a designer involved whatsoever, right? We've got this pink beige tile with the purple countertop that in no way relates. I mean, this is a very common bathroom that I've seen a million times, right? Like no one's gonna take a picture of it and put it in a magazine now, right? But this is what people do when they don't have a designer giving them a plan because they're just putting in the trendy tile that they see in the tile store. And so that's kind of the point that I wanna make, right? So this bathroom on the right obviously has more of a higher end look to it, but um, I just wanted to show you that it's. Really, it's really the details that, that make a white bathroom interesting. And it doesn't have to be white. You could also do a wood stain vanity in a white bathroom because the wood stain vanity totally warms up the bathroom. Now, Marianne had a very specific request. She wanted to create some flow from what she already had. So this is her red carpet in her... Um, in her adjoining bedroom. And so obviously red is a color that she loves. And so if you wanted to keep going and create some flow, then you could possibly put in a red vanity. And this was the tile Trish and I found because we thought this is a little too big and also trendy. This The chevron look is already, you know, has moved on to sort of herringbone. I would say that that chevron look was very big in, what would you say, all through the brown trend? All through the, yeah. I mean, it's had it's 20, it's had a 20 year cycle, I would say. It's been in for a long time. But some black and white tile would look great, right? To balance the red, it would look, if the whole room was white tile, it, you know, you need the black and white tile to balance the red vanity. But that's the kind of idea that I would um, come up with to create some flow from the room that is, that has the red carpet. Okay, what else? Does anyone have any questions about that? Um, no, okay. All right, oh, we're at the end, but we're not done yet because we have lots to talk about and lots of questions to cover. So I was right. Didn't, how long have we been doing this now since we actually got live, Terrence? 78 minutes ago. Yeah, 78 minutes. Okay, good. So, um, so I just wanted to mention that uh, those of you that have purchased my exterior masterclass, I will still be adding to this. We are adding a patio fence module by April 17th. All updates will already be included. And now that I have so many amazing, um, like so many great examples of exteriors, I should have thought of this before <laughs> to ask for them. I'm going to be doing some, like I'll do a whole module where I'm just showing like, here's what I would do to fix this. And here's what I do to fix that. Just like all the exteriors that have arrived, not all of them, but all the ones that are going to be a good example. Um, so we're going to add that module as well. So that will come in May. And currently um, my cabin fever sale ends tomorrow night on Sunday night. So if you're watching this past Sunday, this will have passed, but 
Both my eBooks are 50% off, however, and all my online products come with 100% money back guarantee. And um, my curated collection of neutrals, whites, and colors are also on sale. They have actually never been $70 off. So um, they're, and they're a better discount here as well. Cause if you add these two up, then it's a good price. And that will help you get your colors right. Cause the, the point of the curated collection of large samples is that if you need a neutral, you're gonna find that in my curated collection. So you don't have to keep searching for other neutrals. I mean, the whites, and the neutrals that you need, they are basically in the 50, that's it. And then if the VIP, so if you don't have any of my colors, you'll want the uh, foundation collection. And um, then if you want to add to your collection of neutrals, then the VIP collection includes um, a few more neutrals and then the best darks, greens, blues, yellows, pinks, forest greens, like that. Okay. And then, um, sadly, as you all know, because of this terrible pandemic, I have had to reschedule all my spring courses and move them to the fall. So those of you that have not been notified yet, if you are in San Diego or Dallas, we're literally talking to the hotels right now. And we, I believe we got San Diego confirmed for November 2nd and 4th, moving San Diego from June 1st to the 3rd. And then tentative dates for Dallas will be November 17th to 19th. And notice how right now you're feeling like, oh, is it over already? Oh, oh, I don't really want her to stop talking. That's, how, that's what it's like for three whole days with me live. I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, hopefully you can make those dates if you are in San Diego or Dallas. And we will definitely send out emails to let you know that we have um, rescheduled or moved the dates around to make sure that they work with your schedule. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about, um, so I promised that um, I would talk about the challenges that, um, the biggest challenge we face when doing virtual color consultations and how we overcome it. So Trisha and I are kinda of gonna tag team and talk about this. And then, um, so I'm gonna come back um, so that you can see me here. And what else do I want to say? Do I have anything more here? No, I'm at the end. Yeah, so um, I just want to talk about that because this is where the future is. So can I just hit escape, Terrence? That's all I need to do, right? Yes, just gonna hit escape. Sorry about that. Yeah, you had just hit uh, stop sharing. Okay. Up at the top. Stop sharing. Okay, great. Okay, here we are. All right, so um, I put it out to the team and everyone had some such great answers because I wanted to know what everyone wanted to say about that. But let's see, what's the first thing? So here's the first thing. So when you're doing e-design or selling e-design on your website, not, you need to like, okay, Years ago, before I figured out what my niche was, I was actually selling on my website that I did corporate color, right? So that you could call me if you needed to know, like, I don't know, what color your mountain bike should be or what color your sink should be if you're Kohler or something like that, right? And, well, nobody ever called me for that. And so I didn't realize that until I did a course about that and then realized I already had a niche and my niche was the world of decorating and residential color, which is primarily what I do. Now, can I do exterior for like commercial? Yes, but I, there isn't a lot of that on my blog. And so I don't get a lot of inquiries for uh, commercial design. However, with e-design, what sells my e-design is the fact that people are reading my blog and they get what my aesthetic is. And pretty soon, if they've read my blog long enough, they start to really worry that if they don't hire me to help them, they will make some big mistakes. So it's important that you, along with setting up your e-design you know, offerings as a designer on your website, it's important that you then start writing some blog posts to talk about your aesthetic, right? I mean, people that hit my site 
if they are not happy with an answer called subway tile, the end, well, guess what? They're just going to keep clicking. And that's just fine because I have a huge following of people that resonate with my classic and timeless aesthetic. So um, it's talking about classic and timeless for a second because I got an email asking about that as well. So here's the thing, and I, and I have talked about this on the blog, but there's something powerful about hearing it from me, hearing me speaking the words. And so here's what it is. Color is always more timeless than the current trendy neutral. And I know that it's so much easier to decorate with neutrals, but that's the quickest and easiest answer to that question. Right, I talk about this in my courses when the Ritz in Paris did their $400 million renovation a few years ago. You know, Vogue loved it so much. They did a spread on the pink and white, you know, guest room. And you know, if you look, if you go to click and you look at that hotel, that hotel is filled with color. You know, there's the blue and white um, lobby. And then there's the turquoise and red room and all of these colorful rooms. Well, when does the Ritz need to renovate again? When it's threadbare versus all the other hotels that we hit right now. And, they're, and you can immediately, you walk in, you immediately know when the hotel was renovated. And sadly, some of these hotels were just renovated in a trend that instantly dates them, right? If you were to walk into a hotel that just did brown, that hotel, instantly looks 20 years old because that's how old the brown trend was. Okay, so the first thing is establishing your expertise, right? So, you know, people, people want to be able to see your aesthetic and get to know that your advice is good. So this means that, and I think this applies to any business owner as well. If you want to start putting your um, business online, not just interior design, but right now when we're at home, right? As Gary Vay would say, stop watching Lost when he did that video years ago. Like, you have time now. So now is the time to start putting your expertise on a blog. And you don't have to think, oh, I have to have a blog as, you know, that gets as many fo you know, followers as Maria. That's not what it is. But you want people to then be able to click around and read, like, what your aesthetic is so that they get it. Okay, enough about that. All right, bad photos is a huge, huge issue, right? So when you send in photos for e-design, the photos must be taken, as I said before, in good natural light with no lights on and without flash. So we have a set of very specific instructions on how to take photos and what photos we need. However, you also need to be bossy enough to not wonder if we should be able to see the color and to know that, wow, these photos are bad and they simply need to be retaken. Because you might get caught up in trying to figure out the color when really it's the, just that the photos have not been taken accurately, right? We need that white piece of paper plunked down on tile, countertops with different colors so that you can then start to see, like, are we dealing with, you know, true white, off-white, or cream? And then what else? Not, um, not meeting the client in person, getting to know them. So the solution to that is having a good questionnaire that allows the client to express their personality and likes and dislikes. And then other challenges, finding the best solution within their means, right? With, the, with their budget, what will have the most impact, where can you bend the rules? Anticipating objections and heading them off with good whys. In other words, selling the advice and having the confidence to back it up in advance. And what else? Explaining to clients why they can't have what they think they want because of clashing or dated hard finishes or lack of existing decor. So a solution to that is teaching about undertones and sometimes giving a bonus rug or pillow to guide them. This is hard for new designers who simply work really hard at giving the client what they want because they don't have enough experience to know what they cannot have, what they want, or they can't explain why. So e-design is trickier that way because you want to be able to, you, you have to anticipate what their objections are going to be. It's not all smooth sailing, right? So um, we recently had a client who didn't understand that 
the cream colors, the, the beige colors we'd given her for exterior actually do read cream. So because she was looking at these beige paint chips on the presentation, and she just didn't read. Like if you're a type A driver personality like me, like you don't read, you just kind of scan. And then you go, hey, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> so that's what she did. So then she was all disappointed. Like I wanted whiter, I wanted a choice of white and cream options, right? So then we had to explain that, okay, no, like we had to redo that. And then we had to think, okay, like in the future, when we are giving people creams and whites for their exteriors, we can't have the beige paint chips sitting there right on top of the exterior because it confuses the customer and makes them think they're not getting what they wanted. So there's so many different things like that that we have learned over the years that, um, that help ex to explain to our clients like why their, their um, color is the right color. And so just to be clear, my team puts everything together. I mean, I have brilliant Trisha here who directs the team and then everything goes through me. So we talk about what's happening, but really what takes up all the time is in putting all the presentations together in a clear and organized format so that the client has the step-by-step -step process on you know, how to carry out that renovation with the colors that we've given them, how to carry out all those new builds. And we've now started putting everything also in the right order. So you know what to order first and what to test second and like that. And what else do I want to say? Trisha, do you want to add something? Oh, and then everything obviously is approved finally by me because this is my brand. I mean, so nothing goes out unless, unless it's all been approved and finalized by me. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm a little distracted because there's a whole flurry of questions and comments I'm sort of um, trying to keep up with. So I just wanted to be clear that um, we are happy to answer these live questions coming through on YouTube. Um, but, you know, we may not have addressed your photo that you sent in by email because um, we weren't able to do all of them. But Maria, you know, is planning to incorporate some in some future posts, right, Maria? Yes. Yeah, and, uh, lots of content for future Ask Maria posts. It's awesome. Yeah, so if we didn't get to your photos that you sent in, thank you so much for sending them in. Um, and hopefully we will be able to address them at some point in a, another webinar or a post or um, so, but for sure, keep the comments that, and questions coming on the YouTube uh, link there. We are here to answer. Yeah, so, I mean, I think, and I think that's pretty much all we want to say about uh, sort of the challenges um, doing e-design and somebody was asking about whether we whether someone could just buy the exterior body color if they only need the only need the body color and yes I mean if you click around you can see that we have like a la carte options for if you only need the trim or if you only need the body color however when we get your photos if I look at your photos and realize well but we can't we're not going to give you the look you're not going to get the look that you want without the trim being painted as well that's when we give you the option to either buy the trim or we refund the package. You know, obviously um, that's, that's how that works. So, but yes, in the meantime, if you only need the trim, you can buy the trim. Yeah. So if we, if we look at your photos and see that, you know, you would be better off with, you know, a larger package or, you know, we can send you an add on or we can, um, you know, um, get you into the, the package that you need to make sure you get the advice you want. So. If you're not sure where to start, you know, buy what you think you need and we can kind of guide you or you can send in an email to the e-design email and we can help you figure out which package would be best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, did I have any other questions I wanted to address about that? Okay. So I just wanted to answer sort of some random questions now. Um, let's see. Somebody said, okay, this was a good question that I wrote down. She said, I have a question that doesn't need a photo. I've been asked to help choose colors and finishes in the common areas for a senior living apartment building. My question, are there colors that are preferred for this age group? I don't anticipate anything dark unless it's cabinetry. We'll be choosing flooring as well. So I guess I have two questions. The second one, when choosing decor for senior living, common area, not rooms, am I decorating for the visitors as much as for the people living there? I sure want the kids and grandkids to think this is a cool place to visit. So... The, I think that yes, it should, I would decorate, I would, I would be current. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd be that focused on the 
the age bracket of the seniors. But the only comment I would make is one thing I learned years ago in my color training is that it's not good to have big patterns on carpet or stairs because their vision is not as good. And so it would confuse them and create a tripping hazard when you are going downstairs and stuff if you use like a busy pattern carpet. So um, that's my only hot tip that I have about that. But I just thought I'd put that in there. All right. Have you been tracking these questions, Trisha? Yeah, trying to and trying to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, so there's some lots of questions about e-design, um, some votes for some VIP boards to be made in Sherwin-Williams. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, well, and okay, so I wanted, I mean, that might, might come a day when we did that, but we, so I was certainly getting heavy pressure to transfer my core collection over to um, Sherwin-Williams as well. So now we have that in the foundation collection. And this is actually a good question to address the fact that my system is completely transferable. So if you're watching from Australia or somewhere where you're, you don't have access um, to Benjamin Moore paint chips, um, you can transfer, like you can trans, like, okay. So for example, <laughs> this is the best way to explain it. If any of us are looking for, say we're using a fan deck we don't normally use, like a, I don't know, like a Dun Edwards or a Dulux or something that we don't normally choose colors from. If we're looking at an interior and we think, okay, I think this interior needs like pale oak because the finishes are taupe. Then what we would immediately do is pull out pale oak and then pull out that fan deck and try to match pale oak to like try to find that the closest color that matches pale oak. I mean, am I, you know, even though I am the true color expert, do I whip open a fan deck with no reference point? No, it's way faster and way easier for, to just take that paint chip and match it. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, um, it could come a day where we could do some VIPs in Jerome Williams, but um, we don't have it available right now. But yeah, that's a good question. All right, what else? I think uh, from Jennifer Went, there's a good question. When you Photoshop on pictures, like for this webinar, are you able to put in an exact uh, Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams color, or do you pick a color from the program and tell them the color it is most like? So no, you actually have to know what the color looks like on an exterior. So for example, Manchester Tan, Edgecombe Gray, Ballet White, these are all colors that out on an exterior look cream. So if you were to take Edgecombe Gray or Manchester Tan and literally paint that on exterior, you'd have this beige exterior, like, and that's not what it looks like. So you need to, you need to know what it looks like first. And you could search a lot of that. A lot of these answers, you know, I mean, they're in my masterclass. So if you're doing e-design, you could literally copy the, um, the houses that are in my masterclass and you could then copy that if you were trying to Photoshop for a client, because in my masterclass, I'm actually saying, here's, this is what gray mist looks like. This is what ballet white looks like. This is what Edgecombe gray looks like, like that. Um, yeah, I would like to just say that, um, you know, this is the problem with a lot of those kind of paint company or online rendering um, programs is if you stick, a, you know, a certain color on an exterior just sampled from the program, you're go it's going to look a lot darker, you know, on that rendering than it will um, outside blown out in the exterior light. And so it's going to be a little misleading, right? And you're probably going to end up choosing a color that's too light and then be surprised when it looks washed out when you actually put it on your house outside. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's why I, I've never used those um, programs because they don't, they just don't, they don't, they don't take into consideration, you know, what the color looks like when it's actually washed out on an exterior. So what else? Um, so CHP is talking about how um, she has experimented with using some e-design and had, you know, and done well with that. But, you know, sometimes she likes to have a, a, a designer um, in her space. So, um, yeah, I mean, one of the, to go back to the challenges of e-design, you know, um, we are always refining our process to try and create ways to connect 
and, and get a really good sense of the client and the space. And that comes down to um, good communication and good gathering of information with the, with the questionnaires. And it's actually kind of surprising um, how well it can, it can work, you know? Um, and we're always finding new ways to make that part even better. Yes, and actually that brings up another point that, oh, how come, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Uh, I can still hear you. Oh, I see. I was getting an update now. Okay, hold on. Oh, there, okay. All right, I just disappeared for a second. I could just see something else. Okay, so what did I wanna say just now about, what were you just saying, Trisha? I just lost my train now when I was trying to find it. Oh, um, I, I was just saying that, you know, we're, we're constantly um, working on improving the process of, um, you know, communicating and getting a good sense of the client and their space. Um, with you know oh. the constraints of consulting online. Yeah. Is this what I was gonna say? I think it was, a, oh, right, right, right. Okay, so everyone's always really skeptical about the color and how it reads online. So as I teach in my live workshops, the first thing is you need a Mac because the Mac has the best color um, calibration. Is that mm -hmm. what you would say, Terrence? <laughs> uh, yeah, Mac, absolutely. I would say yeah. that's for sure, yeah. yeah. So you need a Mac in order to see color correctly. I mean, I was quite horrified one day when I arrived at my mother's house years ago. She had this like old, old desktop sitting in her bedroom. And I'm looking at my website with the yellow and the yellow literally just like, it just screamed off the page. And I thought, oh my God, some people are gonna have a screen that like, they're gonna think this woman has no taste. Like, because the yellow looks so bad on her really old screen. So. You got to have the right tools. You got to invest in the right tools if you're going to do this for a living. And also the other thing is, is that once we have 10 photos of a living room, you know, you take the photo toward the window, right? Where the window kind of kills the light and the furniture could look pink beige. But then when the client's standing at the window, taking a photo of the light hitting the furniture, now you go, oh, okay, now I can see that it's green beige. It's not pink beige. And so, you know, once you've seen that sofa four different angles, you can, you can, you know what color it is. And how I know that this works is that, you know, we don't get emails from people saying, you know, you, Maria, you suck. You should be fired. We don't get those emails. And so... <laughs> That's how I know that it works. Cause it is hard to make money if you're just trying to sell furniture. All of these um, e-design companies that are like a flash in the pan, they come and they go. They're so cheap, you know, get your living room designed for $80 cause they're trying to sell furniture from Wayfair. Like, and how does that designer make any money? I mean, you know, I think that the way of the future is understanding color and how it works. I mean, that, that's how we make all our money. We do very few, um, you know, yes, we'll put in affiliate links for furniture, but you know, that it's a tiny amount, truly. Um, it's, it's really about, it's color. We're selling the right color and that's what people are buying. So, okay. What other questions do we have? Um, do you recommend Sherwin Williams color and venture more colors for the same house or do you keep to the same brand? I mean, I don't think it matters. I think you can, uh, I mean, venture more and Sherwin Williams, let's be clear, they match each other's paint all day and all night because they're both a good quality paint. So if you're dealing with a paint company, a, a paint store that is reputable, I mean, that that's what they're doing all day and all night. So um, that's, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't have a huge issue with matching those colors. And I think that if the undertone is right, even if it's not the exact same shade, you're not gonna be fussed about it. This is about getting your undertone correct on the neutrals. All right, well, um, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's hard to kind of answer most questions without a photo. So um, thank you so much, everyone. Just a minute, what did I wanna say in the end? I had it written down. <laughs> uh, hey, Maria, I think, um... You know, you touched on it in the very beginning, but maybe you could just let people know about um, the cabin fever sale and everything we have going on while we're stuck at home and have all this extra time to do things. Yeah, I mean, um, my exterior is a good, my exterior masterclass. If you're someone that's interested in learning how to specify exterior, or you're learning, want to understand how it works. 
Um, I would watch that thing over and over because you're going to get something different from it at each time. And please know that it's not static. I will be adding to it. Um, that's still coming. More will be added this year and just as the trends change. So, and, um, and, yeah. And um, can you just so the, the sale ends tomorrow night and you're offering that at, you're giving people $200 off that. Yes, right? that's right. Off the masterclass. And then my eBooks are 50% off and my color boards are up to 20% off. So off one individual set is $70 off. So this is a great way. I mean, cause now more than ever, we really can't afford to get it wrong. So um, this is the time. And what else do I wanna say? So thanks uh, Terrence for fixing our glitches in the beginning and uh, Trisha for tag teaming with me. And um, the other thing I wanna say is that everything will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right right now, it's because we're not at the end. So that's my brilliant advice for the day. So be safe. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here.